My name is Christine and here on YouTube, I am known as Frugal Fit Mom. And most of my very, very popular videos have been extreme grocery budget challenges where I feed my family of six for $30 a week, $40 a week. I feed myself for $10 a week. I will leave all of those videos down below. Now I realize that those are fairly extreme. So in today's video, it's going to be slightly different. And that means I'm going to still go to the store, not spend a ton of money, and I'm still gonna feed my family of six for a week, but it's not going to be quite so tight. It's not gonna be quite so cheap. We're gonna call it more of a realistic budget grocery video where I know people are gonna wanna take some shortcuts. They're not gonna wanna spend all this time cooking. So you will see some convenience items in today's video for the sake of you guys. I just wanna make your life a little bit easier. I realize that making homemade bread maybe isn't in the cards for every person. Let's go shopping and let's get cooking. I decided to go to Winco Foods for this extreme grocery challenge. It's very similar to an Aldi when it comes to price and maybe Walmart would have a lot of the same prices as well, but check out this sausage, 48 cents. Can you believe that? And one of my favorite things about Winco is they have these random, really great prices on produce. So I walk in and I see this five pound bag of Fuji apples for $1.98, which is spectacular. The tomato prices were amazing. The bell pepper prices were amazing. And look how gorgeous this produce is. When I do these challenges, I do have a menu or overall game plan. And a lot of the times your standard, very inexpensive ingredients make the list often. And that's gonna be things like onions, lettuce, potatoes, rice, beans, a cheaper meat like chicken or a large Pork roast is usually very inexpensive because they're so versatile and also because they're so inexpensive. I love getting peanut butter as a budget pantry staple. It's high in calories, high in protein and fat, and it tastes delicious. You can use it in so many ways, for breakfast, for lunches, for sandwiches, for breakfast. Can you go much cheaper than a hot cereal like oatmeal or grits? No, you cannot. Oatmeal is so good for you. In addition to having all three major macronutrients, it has a good amount of fiber. And did you know that it actually has a ton of iron and vitamin B6 in it as well? I try and do these uh, budget challenges sometimes without beans and it's so hard. <laughs> beans and rice are so cheap. They can make so many different types of meals. And if you cook them right, they're really, really tasty. And yes, we are definitely going to the snack aisle and I am perusing all of my options to try and find the best price for the most delicious cracker. And it's going to be these fake uh, Winco style wheat thins at $1.28 a box, which I don't think is that bad. When it comes to feeling satiated on a low budget diet, fat is where it's at. And my friends, I am a huge fan of sour cream. And don't forget those frozen veggies for long-term, not shelf stable, but like freezer stable. You could just buy a bunch of bags, throw it in your freezer and then pull it out when it's convenient. And instead of making bread this time, I found this fresh French bread for 88 cents a loaf such a good deal. And then of course it's time to throw all of my groceries across the uh, back of my car. <laughs> Make sure all the bread falls out, all the cans fall out. Okay. I'm being more careful now. Just loading everything up, ready to go home and start cooking for you guys. Here's my receipt from Winco before tax. This was $49.92. And I did buy two more other things that you will see in just a minute that added about 18 more dollars. For $68.22, before taxes, this is everything that I picked up to feed a family of six for the next week. I showed you most of the products that I got at Winco. That was where I got most of the items. There were two things I got from another store. Number one is this pork shoulder picnic roast that is going to be our meats for most of the dinners and this two pound pack of pepperoni. Honestly, this right here is kind of what inspired a lot of my ideas for this week. Now the key for this week is for it to be fast and easy. So you'll notice I actually bought some bread instead of getting flour and yeast and making my own. We just want it to be very quick. And I do have some splurge items. I would consider cheese to be a splurge item. I would say for the two pound blocks, about $5 each is pretty good. Here are my meats for the week. Here are my canned items, bread, couple boxes of crackers, the tortillas, big thing of bulk oatmeal, produce over on this side, apples, bananas, lettuce, 
bell pepper, tomato, mixed vegetables, onions, some bulk beans. They were cheaper to buy them this way than in the aisle pre-bagged, and some chicken bouillon because it adds a ton of flavor. All of this stuff combined with your basic pantry ingredients are going to make the following meals. Breakfast for this entire week are going to be some variation of oatmeal. Have this extremely large container of the quick oats. There's a couple different ways you could cook it. You could bake it in the oven. You could do it in the Instant Pot. You could do it on a pot on the stove or in the microwave. So I'm gonna do individual bowls in the microwave and you can do like an apple cinnamon, brown sugar kind of a thing. You could do peanut butter and banana kind of a situation. There's a whole bunch of different ways we can do it. Andrew has requested oatmeal with apples. So I will mix up that bowl for him so you can take a look at it. I like to cook it in the microwave as one serving Serving is a half a cup, as you can see right there. This is a really, really large serving bowl. Put that in here and I'm gonna add an entire cup of water. And what's great about doing it in the microwave is you can continuously add water and really bulk up the volume. I set that for a minute 30 and then we'll check it. Here's the apple and cinnamon completed bowl. This is one entire apple. You don't have to do a whole apple. It's actually a lot. <laughs> and you could cook the apple with the oatmeal, but I actually prefer it to be a little bit crunchier, taste sweeter to me. No need to peel it. This is a huge bowl of food. The apple cinnamon option. Half my family likes this one. And because I got that big bag of apples for so cheap, we'll have plenty to eat it this way for the entire week. This bowl of oatmeal has the same amount of oats, but this time I added the peanut butter that I grabbed, a little bit of brown sugar, and half of a sliced banana, mostly because the bananas I got were huge. That is another option you can do. If you have chocolate chips, you could throw those in too. That'd be really good. This is just for size reference on the bowl. I know like the bowl by itself doesn't look like very much, but you can see that my son is eating it and it's actually massive. Tyler, isn't that like a ton of food? Yeah. <laughs> is that enough oatmeal for you, man? a big bowl. I think it might be a little too much. Oh, too much food, huh? A little too much. For three of the lunches this week, we are doing French bread pizzas. Nothing could be easier than this. You just slice the French bread this way, top it with some pizza sauce, sprinkle some pepperoni and mozzarella cheese. And there you go. It's one of my kids' favorite things. You don't have to make a crust. It ends up crunchy and spicy and delicious. You can put whatever toppings you want on this, but this has long been a staple in my house, a complete hit with the kids. Here is lunch number one. Two of the other lunches for the week will look very similar. Don't worry, I have double pepperoni. There's pepperoni under the cheese cheese and then pepperoni on top of the cheese. So you get a full pepperoni experience. I'm gonna put this into 475, nope, 425 degree oven for about 10 minutes. Remember, we're not cooking crust or anything. We're just kind of melting the cheese and letting it get brown. Two of our lunches this week are going to be homemade Lunchables with our pepperoni, some sliced cheddar cheese, and one box for each day of the fake wheat thins, these uh, wheat snack crackers. I love these. <laughs> these are some of my favorite crackers. And whatever fruit that you have left over, I have a couple of apples that we can use. The bananas, while I got very large bananas, we did eat them for uh, breakfast. So let me put this together. You can split this up. You don't have to do them back to back days, but my kids never complain when they get to like build their own sandwiches out of whatever deli meat or pepperoni we have and they love cheddar, you can't go wrong. You know, as I was putting this plate together, it occurred to me this could also be considered a charcuterie board, which is a very hard word to say, by the way. <laughs> and I don't build the crackers for my kids. They like to do this themselves, like make it however they want. Sometimes they do all cheese, sometimes they do all meat, sometimes they do all of it, sometimes they triple decor it. It's better to just let them do whatever is fun for them. I'm not gonna lie, I am very excited about this lunch. I love a good cheese and cracker plate. This one makes me very happy. Another lunch I love and that my kids love are quesadillas, just some plain cheese and a tortilla. I'm telling you, it is one of their favorite things. So I'll put that right here and I'm gonna cook it on my skillet. Don't forget to serve it with some sour cream and salsa. When I make quesadillas, I like to put a little bit of butter or oil. I usually go with oil in my skillet. This is already warm, so there it goes. And once my tortilla's in, give it a little, a little bit of that so the oil can get all over that bottom piece. Oh, cheese overboard. Ugh. 
Here we go, this is how we like to serve our quesadillas. I should have shaken up my salsa. A bunch of the liquid came out, but that's okay. It's just gonna make everything taste good. I love quesadillas. They are seriously one of the easiest lunches and all my kids love them. Always leaving, then you got me chasing you like I'm the one to blame. I am so excited I have so much pepperoni left because I can make these pepperoni mozzarella like pizza wraps and I threw them in the microwave to melt the cheese a little bit and because the pepperoni is so fatty you almost don't even need a sauce but because I didn't use all of my pizza sauce from earlier a little bit left you can kind of just put a little bit on the side for them to dip and this is a great lunch uh, my son Ryan specifically is very excited about this for most of the dinners this week, we are cooking up this pork shoulder picnic roast. We'll be using the shredded meat for most of the week. Cook it once, use all week type of a situation. The first cook only requires three ingredients and a crock pot. I have my pork shoulder picnic roast, one jar of salsa and one ingredient from your pantry, a little bit of brown sugar because we are going to do kind of a copycat Cafe Rio shredded sweet pork. I don't use a ton of brown sugar because I don't like my meat super, super sweet. This is an unpopular opinion. I feel like the Cafe Rio sweet pork is like too sweet. I don't prefer it. The steak is very good, but the pork is like a little much for me. So I'm gonna tone it back a bit. So let's get these three ingredients in here and get them cooked so we can have dinner tonight. This is just over a nine pound roast, like 9.3 pounds, three quarters of a cup of brown sugar, standard pantry ingredient here, the entire jar of salsa right on top. And we're gonna put this puppy on high for a couple hours just to get it going and then take it to low and it will cook all day long, anywhere from seven to 10 hours, depending on the temperature of your personal crock pot. They're all a little bit different. So let's go high and get that sucker going. I am getting my pinto beans ready for the week. They are rinsed off, although I did not soak them. So they're in here with two of my chicken bouillon cubes and now I'm gonna add a ton of water because if you don't soak these before, they soak up a lot of water. Make sure you spill water all over your counter, very important. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more. In my pinto beans, I do like to add some seasoned salt as well. So I'm just a good, good little shake about the equivalent of a teaspoon or so, and lid on. Here are the cooked pinto beans that I can use for the week and do not get rid of this cooking liquid because there's a lot of flavor in that. I have a couple more ingredients to prep for tonight's dinner. I'm gonna shred up my, shred up my lettuce, chop up one of my tomatoes, shred the cheese, and cook the rice. You can cook up however much rice you want for your family. You can cook it however way you like to do it. My favorite these days is in the Instant Pot, but if you have a rice cooker, pot for the stove, whatever. Just cook up the rice. If you have some seasonings, add it. If you don't, no big deal. Everything is coming together. The beans are cooked now, so I'm just letting them uh, do a natural release for about 15 minutes. My pork is looking really nice. I just wanna make sure it is cooked all the way through. You can see how hot it is right there. I ended up leaving it on high for about eight hours. Prepping my side dishes and then we're gonna build our Cafe Rio style burritos. Time to pull out this huge roast. I'm gonna take out that bone and all of that fat right there, shred it up and stick it, whoops, back in the juice. I was at the wrong place at the right time. Cause suddenly there you were with those bright blue eyes. We were conversing into the night sky When you took my hand said, let's leave now Don't wanna be shy Here is two of the dinners that we are going to be eating this week. Cafe Rio inspired pork burritos. So we have our tortillas, rice, black beans, lots of cheddar cheese, lettuce and tomato. My family doesn't jive on fresh tomato on tacos, so I usually only do a little bit. Some sour cream for the toppings. We're doing this buffet style so they can make their own. This whole huge thing of nine pounds of shredded sweet pork roast. about everything that was on our mind. Talking to you gave me better 
flight Then you took my hand Said let's leave now Don't wanna be shy With some of the leftover pork roast, which I put in the fridge in this, and then I froze some more of it, we are making rice bean bowls. So you can see that there's rice down here at the bottom, a whole bunch of beans in here, the meat, heated that up, and then topped it with the shredded lettuce that I had, sour cream, and some of the salsa that I had purchased. This is a huge bowl of food right here. Super satisfying, really delicious. So this is going to be dinner for the next two nights. For two more of our dinners for this week, I am going to make a soup out of a bunch of leftover ingredients. Definitely the shredded pork roast is gonna go in here. Chicken broth cubes, some leftover rice. I have a little bit of pinto beans and a little bit of black beans. The corn I bought, the two cans of the fake Rotel, and my other jar of salsa. We're gonna put all of this with some diced onion into my large soup pot, cook it all together, taste it for salt, and it should be good, so let's Dump everything in. Get my onions going first and a little bit of oil and my four chicken bouillon cubes, which is equal to eight cups of water. So I'm gonna go get my eight cups of water and get ready to dump that in next along with all my canned goods. The water is in and the pork is in. I put the rest of the shredded pork that I had along with the juices so I can use up all of that flavor that I worked so hard to create earlier in the week. If you're worried about your pork going bad, it freezes beautifully. Just keep out what you need for a few days, freeze the rest and then pull it out later. In comes my two cans of diced tomatoes with green chilies, which is not focusing. My can of cream style corn, which should cut the acidity of the canned tomatoes since corn is so sweet. I also added the rest of my black beans. There they are. And I had a couple of pinto beans I threw in there right there. As you can tell, this pot is like really full right now. <laughs> I'm gonna add a little bit of my salsa just for some flavor here. Wear an apron so you don't splash it all over yourself. And it is time to let this come to a boil, reduce to a simmer. Everything in here is already cooked. So we're just kind of getting the flavors to come together and we will add the rice at the very, very end. And if you saved some cheese from earlier, we can definitely top this with some cheddar cheese. My friends, I almost forgot about my frozen mixed vegetables. That's why I bought this, so I could put this in this soup. So here we go, in they go. Oh my gosh, this is so big. This is like a nine quart soup pot. It is at the top and the rice is not even in here. This will absolutely feed a family of six, probably a family of eight for two entire meals. And if you wanna be completely extra, you can take some of your tortillas, give them a little fry and do like homemade tortilla chips on the top for a little bit of crunch. Just added the rice which I am waiting for it to break up a little bit. It's still kind of in a, a little bit of a block because it was in that Tupperware. But, and I just tasted the broth for seasoning. You guys, this is bomb. The flavors, oh look, there's a, <laughs> there's a big chunk of pork. It's spicy from the Rotel substitute and the salsa. It's a little sweet because of the rice and the corn. It's creamy because of the beans, the meaty flavor of the pork, the extra veggies. This tastes so good. The salt level is on point. I am so excited to feed this to my family. Oh, look at that. Yeah. I just have to mush that up a little bit. As soon as the rice kind of warms up and loosens up a little bit, we are going to serve this up. You have to try this. Like you have to cook the roast and try this soup. This is delicious. I will have a recipe down below. I'll watch the film back because honestly, I just kind of made this up. I don't even have a name for it. Shredded pork tortilla soup. Is that dumb? Sh um, shredded pork um, <laughs> clearly I'm very good at thinking up names for soups. <laughs> Shredded pork and veggie soup. That's what it's going to be. Look at all this good stuff in here. Oh my gosh. Top it with some cheese, some sour cream. Mmm. Our last dinner, it will involve this sausage that I picked up at the last minute just because it was 50 cents when I walked in. I'm gonna use this, a couple more onions, the bell pepper I had purchased because this was like 48 cents, my last little bouillon cube to make some kind of a sauce type of a thing. Oh, and we are gonna put some pinto beans in this as well and serve it on top of rice. So I don't really know what to call this because I'm just throwing stuff in a pan and keeping my fingers crossed that it turns out okay. Sausage pinto beans over rice? I, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm gonna heat up a pan, 
and we're gonna get the onions and pepper in first. A little bit of oil, all my onions and my bell peppers, so just saute this until they are soft. I just added the sausage, and now I'm going to add in the bouillon cube. I dissolved in, out. <laughs> oh, that's hot. In one cup of water, so I have about one cup of water here. I could add more if I need to. Here's kind of my sauce, and I decided to add, I'm thinking maybe one teaspoon of this. Before, I didn't really know what I was doing, but it's like starting to come together in my head now, so just trust me. Change my mind, half a teaspoon. We'll start with half, we can always add more. I will let this simmer for maybe five minutes. You know, I think I am gonna add a little bit more water. It looks a little low to me. Simmer for five minutes, and then the beans are going in. It's looking pretty good. In comes about three cups of my pinto beans with some of the cooking liquid and a hell of a salsa left. Let this simmer together until everything tastes good, really. Make sure the beans are soft. Waiting for my rice to cook and this like, I don't know what to call this, like stew, sausage, bean sauce. <laughs> Beans and rice, I don't know, but this is not like your basic beans and rice. Am I right or am I right? Like this looks kind of amazing. Lid back on and I'll see you puppies later. Drunken beans, that's what we're gonna call it. Drunken beans, that's the name. Dinner for the last night, drunken beans over rice and I already tasted it, this is delicious. I highly recommend you make this. You cannot go wrong. This is really, really good. It is the end of the week and I have some leftover ingredients actually. I have, hold up, I have about 14 tortillas left, a little bit of dry rice, some cheddar cheese, some mozzarella cheese, pepperoni, and still some cooked pinto beans. With my remaining ingredients, I can absolutely make some more, I'll we'll call them pizza dias, <laughs> like quesadillas but with pizza. We could make refried bean and cheese burritos. We could make bean and rice burritos. I could make pinto beans and rice dish. So I could probably come up with another 12 servings. So depending on how many people are in your family would determine how many meals that actually serves you. I call this one a win, shot it out of the park. And some of those dinners that I made, my kids would not stop talking about how delicious they were. So I will have recipes down below for you if you wanna go check them out along with the shopping list that I ended up purchasing this week. Like always, if you need food for your family, for yourself or whatever, there are a multitude of programs that are designed for this reason. Food pantries, food banks, senior centers, Meals on Wheels, all kinds of stuff that are run by volunteers that are provided for by the state or your local leaders. So if you wanna find out where you can go in your area if you need some food, I know the library or your local school district or city, like the city of blah, 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 if you call them, they'll probably have all that information for you. I will leave all of the previous like super, super extreme budget videos that I have done before down below in the doobly-doo. Thanks for hanging out with me. Maybe consider hitting the thumbs up button and subscribing if you wanna see any other videos that I do and I'll see you next time.